Kevin Shattenkirk's OTGWG. Now, he had three goals total this postseason, but none bigger than that one to put the Tampa Bay Lightning one win away from the Stanley Cup, which, of course, they would go on to win. We're so happy to have Kevin Shattenkirk joining us now. He is fresh off signing a brand new deal with the Anaheim Ducks. But before we move on to that chapter, Kevin, uh, would that be the biggest goal of your entire <laughs> career, do you think? <laughs> I think it's safe to say that's probably the biggest moment in my uh, career other than, you know, finally when we got to hoist the cup as a team. But that's uh, that's one that I, I certainly won't forget. Uh, Kevin, before we get on to Anaheim, we're still going to have to stick with Tampa a little bit more. Now, you've been around the league for a while. Uh, you've been through some different situations. Did you learn anything new being around that Tampa group or some of those Tampa players that you can take forward the rest of your career? Sure. I, I think... Um, you know, it was a testament to a lot of the guys who have been on that team for a while, a lot of the core guys who went to the cup finals in 2015 um, and who suffered that loss to Columbus last year in, in the first round. And I think we all banded together and, and were able to achieve the ultimate goal. But um, there were a lot of guys there who just showed their resiliency and showed that, you know, you stick with it for long enough and it's bound to happen. I saw your wife posted a picture recently on Instagram of your one-year-old son, Connor, <laughs> inside the Stanley Cup. It's amazing, a memory and a picture that you know, he'll always <laughs> have forever. That's so awesome. Uh, What's what, in that water bottle? <laughs> but what was it like for you to you know, share this moment eventually with your family? And also, because this is unlike any other postseason, I understand it's a little different with guys having their day with the Cup. What is the situation there? Well, you know, I think... Um, for us, the ability to come home, fly home, and see our family right after we were uh, finished was, was something we all looked forward to. Um, it was tough not having them on the ice with us. But, um, yeah, like you said, Connor plopped himself right down in the cup. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I didn't jinx him. You know, I don't <laughs> didn't think that that's touching the cup and it's it's bad juju. But, um, no, I mean, I, we're, we're obviously hoping that we can work something out and, and have our day with the cup. And um, for me, give it to a lot of people who have helped me along the way. and and you know, I've been looking for a chance to experience their day with the cup and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, hopefully something happens. And if not, then maybe down the line, we'll, we'll get our chance. Uh, you, you say celebrate with the people that helped you get there, which of course I was in Edmonton when you guys won. It was, it was strange feeling. It was great. The first 15 seconds, it felt totally normal. And then <laughs> it kind of got odd again as the entire experience was when you think about the journey, when you have the cup in your hand and, and, and you're taking your pictures, who do you think about? Who do you want to thank and who do you want to celebrate with? Well, uh, first and foremost, my family, um, you know, I think my, my parents, every, you know, hockey player talks about the sacrifices your parents make along the way, um, the early mornings and such. And, um, I have two older brothers too, who, who definitely drove me as, as a young player to be better and, and get out of my comfort zone a bit, a few, uh, you know, rough beat downs along the way. Yeah, that they made picked me tougher, on you. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they certainly, um, were the driving force and, and obviously my wife and, and son, but. You know, coaches, teammates, mm -hmm. um, youth programs that, you know, help shape you as a young man. And um, you'd love for the, the young kids of, of your area to be able to experience the cup. And, and hopefully that's their goal in mind as well. Absolutely. All right, Shadi, you are a New York kid, spent most of your life living either on the East Coast or in the Midwest when you were with St. Louis. So have you thought at all what it's going to be like to bring the family and live in Southern California now that you're with the Ducks? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I couldn't uh, pass up getting back to the warm weather again after <laughs> being in Tampa. Um, but, you know, my, my older brother, Keith, lived in Newport Beach for a little while and, and is on the West Coast. And um, he's been yearning to have some family out there. And uh, I think we're going to love it. I mean, every person you talk to who, who's been in Southern California, they tell you how great the lifestyle is, um, how easygoing the people are. And, um, you know, the kind of the passion for hockey that they have there as well so I'm excited to get out there and, and really get in touch with the fan base and you know just experience these next few years with uh, a young skilled talented team. Uh, Kevin we understand of course why Anaheim would like you right shot just won a cup you play with other great players they got a couple of lefties in in Cam Fowler and Hampus Lindholm that need a right-handed shot to pair up with it makes sense for them but for you who I'm sure had many options and opportunities what about the Ducks uh, resonated? Well I, I you know, really last summer when I had to make my decision between going to Tampa, the other team was Anaheim. Mm. And I had a great conversation with uh, Dallas Eakins last summer and uh, really, you know, his passion and, and his thought process behind, you know, how they would play as a team was something that I really uh, took to. And 
This year I talked to Bob Murray and, and I think his, uh, his sentiment was that it's time to win in, in Anaheim again. And he's tired of, you know, the quote unquote rebuild that uh, everyone has labeled him under. So it's time for guys to take the next step there. And, and uh, hopefully, you know, me joining there, I can help those guys along the way. Yeah, now you are, of course, a champion. So that brings a whole lot to the table <laughs> as well. You know, you are one of the really few guys across the National Hockey League that uh, will have played into very late September. So <laughs> I'm sure you're totally taking this time off and using it as a normal off season. But with such an uncertain timeline going forward, how do you plan to either stay in shape or when are you going to ramp up your training again? You know, it's it's funny. It's a bit like when we had the pause in, in March uh, when we thought we were coming back in a couple months and that turned into three months and then four months. So, um, you know, I I certainly am planning on the January 1st start, just like the commissioner said. And um, unfortunately, that means I got to be back in the gym next week. So <laughs> it's uh, it's the necessary evil of playing late into the year. Um, you have to get yourself back in shape and um, I certainly don't think I'll be on the ice anytime soon, but uh, we'll be back in the gym and, and uh, working there. Well, for now, I hope you get some quality time with your family and a little bit of rest before hitting the gym once again. Thanks so much for the time, Kevin. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it as always.